So welcome to my demonstration on painting postal light. As ever, I've got my initial painting upside down, the source photograph upside down, so that I can see those tones, those values easier. Try it. Honestly, it's a great little trick. It also helps you see, just use your observational skills instead of your interpretation. So just for a bit, I do this. I've got that red, yellow and touch of green in there and then I've added a little little bit of white a little bit more white to the background land touch more red tiny dot of purple in for the darker bits and I'm using my nice medium flat brush details are there at the start so in's gone some blue and some green into the mix it's still the same mix I started off with I'm just mixing block colors and changing the flavor as I go I like to keep my acrylic mix nice and thick so there's plenty to work with. I'm not running out on the canvas. Not too bothered about mess at this point. Details are for the end, like the icing on the cake to my mind. So the figures, love painting figures upside down. It takes the pressure out of it. You're not illustrating them. You're just looking at angles and shapes. So I've mixed a deep brown, red, yellow and green. That's a touch of purple. And you can see from those shapes that even though the dog's a little bit of a cartoon, they're fairly accurate and they say everything I need to say. So in goes that gold, yellow, tiny touch of green, tiny touch of red and white. I'm going to use that to cut into my figure and shape the edges. Doesn't matter if some edges get lost, creates more movement. And cutting in around people and animals it makes them, and buildings and any object really, it makes it part of the landscape unless there's not that superimposed feeling you sometimes get. And you notice I've um, put that beach in, that wet sand, in large wide downstrokes. This is just a really good way of getting a sense of distance and depth. And you can then go in with the occasional strong horizontal there. So I'm doing in that red, yellow and green. And it just gives the texture of the beach and implies reflection and wet sand. So a touch of, well, I'm still working in that same colour, so a touch of blue and red has gone in there and a bit more white, making that cool brown. And it's going to get cooler as it goes up through the sea. More blue, that's a touch of purple at the back there. Again, I'm not too worried about describing waves, I'm just going for the tones and colours that I see. I'm thinking about brushstroke direction. So some lemon yellow and white in there, touch of red. Just layering up that light. There's some thicker lemon yellow and white there in horizontal blobs with my flat brush. If you keep that light thick, it gives the illusion of light. It's not just illustrating it. So a touch more red's gone in there. And a little bit more green into the mix. So whenever I paint the sea, I think about, or indeed any subject, I think about its nature, the way that it's moving. I always paint the shadows and the underneath first, and then add the light, the foam, the sparkle on last, just because it makes sense with what the light is doing to it. 
So a touch of white, yellow and red on there for some wave highlights. And then we'll get that sky on. So you'll notice what will happen when this sky goes on is that the yellow will start to look like light. At the moment, just it's like yellow blobs. Once the white's gone, that lightest value of the canvas will be allowed to see how those colours are working together much more easily. Nice brownie greys up there. It's a limited palette, so hopefully it's not too tricky to see how I'm mixing these colours. I'm just refining some of them a little. I find as I'm working through a painting, my eye gets much more attuned to what the values and colours are in a photograph or a plein air scene. And suddenly the yellow looks like a path of light and when we come to add that highlight in the sun it'll really glow now that there's no white anywhere else in the painting. I just want to refine this area and get some real, real vibrant colours underneath that sun on that land. So some strong red yellows and whites. If there's any kind of direct light in a painting, it's always good to show that it's having a strong effect on its surroundings. It pushes the illusion. And there we go. A nice big blob with the face of my flat brush just and the corners there for a few little dibs and dabs. And because I'm controlling where that, that light is, it's really strong because it's not competing with any other light anywhere else. It actually starts to look like light to your eye. A little bit of rigor work, so some nice red and yellow special effects on my figure there. This is the time for the finishing details. This is when you can really judge whether you need details or not. And I always find you need less than you think. If you want to keep movement and atmosphere, Keep those details to just the very necessary basic ones. <laughs> a few highlights on my dog. And a few little marks, just red, yellow and white. Touch of atmosphere and movement. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.